God's job yeah. and stuff to develop yeah. up for us. Uh, it's not, uh, uh, it's not okay. just uh, going to go to meetings and doing good works. It's being involved in politics. That's where the action is. That's where they need the help of people who care about the future of our country and want to overturn the mistakes in the line of the Well, I'm here at the Faith and Freedom Coalition. Uh, conference. I'm very glad to be here, but you know, the reason I'm here is because I believe that God has to be involved in the politics of those that uh, are part of American culture, and that would be the citizens. So, with that being said, uh, I feel that the leadership uh, that's, that is needed in America for the um, for the presidential contenders is most important in my mind, and I think most important in America's minds. For example, um, I saw something that happened in Iowa, and of course that's the, uh, the caucus state, and that's the first one where the contenders are going, and uh, they're doing what they call the Iowa Honest Assessment, and uh, they use a report card. So that is because they want the uh, presidential contenders to go where they are and not the other way around. And that's the way it's worked in the past years. So they're very successful. I couldn't do that in Pennsylvania uh, simply because uh, we're in the second tier and by the time the candidates get to us, you know, the nomination has been clinched in uh, 2016. So what I did, I took that idea and it's called Pennsylvania Project Operation Honest Assessment. And what it is, is looking at three categories, which will be for the uh, presidential contenders. And it's a way uh, for citizens to really get informed about all the contenders that they want to look at as consideration for their vote. So it, this honest assessment has three categories. 
Uh, one category would be character. Another character, another category would be uh, core values, and another character is their stance on issues. And under each one of these categories are these attributes for um, for a character, and that's what I want to concentrate on. Uh, honesty, courageousness, uh, decisiveness, uh, solution-oriented, uh, God-fearing. These are the things that I want in a leader, and that's going to take my highest priority when I do this assessment. And then, of course, there's always core values that we need to think about, and those core values would be personal freedom, financial responsibility, economic freedom, and uh, really a debt-free future for the, the people in America, especially the children. And then, of course, the issues they stand on uh, are well known throughout the United States. But character is what I want from a president that's going to be guiding the United States. That's all I can tell you, and I'm going to do my diligence to find out who I'm going to vote for. My name is Richard Lee, and I want to encourage you to go out and do not just, just your civic responsibility. Yes, that's one thing, but also your spiritual responsibility. Go to the voting polls and vote. Somebody said, well, how should we vote? Republican or Democrat? Let me tell you how you ought to vote. You ought to vote just like we are commanded. We vote the Christian ticket. We take the Word of God, we see the principles of the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God, and then we vote for the candidates that's nearest that. The Bible says that the, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Well, that's true. But you see, we in America have the privilege of helping them determine who fills that role as not really king, but leader of our nation. So let me encourage you to vote. Make a difference. Because not only is that a great privilege, that is our Christian mandate and duty. Hey, I'm Alex Kendrick, writer and director of the new movie War Room. This is our fifth feature film with the Kendrick Brothers. And uh, the reason we did War Room is that it's time for believers to get serious about their prayer life. Second Chronicles 7.14 talks about if God's people will repent and return to Him in prayer and, uh, and, and repent from any sin, that God will hear those prayers and forgive their sin and heal their land. And so where our culture is telling people to come out of the closet, for some of us it's time to go pray in our closet. Matthew 6 verse 6 tells us that when you pray, go into your inner room, shut the door, and your Father who sees what's done in secret will reward you. And so for us, we think it's time to fight first in prayer and then to let our faith be known to be salt and light as Scripture calls us to do those things. And so War Room is about this. It is a very inspirational, dramatic film that comes out August the 28th, encouraging the church, encouraging believers to fight first in prayer, praying the Word of God over your lives, your family, and over our culture and leaders. If there was ever a time when we needed to return and fight in prayer, it is now. And so War Room will be an inspirational and encouragement to you. It is entertaining. It is uh, it is funny in places. But other than that, it is it is a call to uh, to bear our arms again and to return to prayer, to seek the Lord in reverence, and to ask Him to do what only He can do. Hope, hope to see you on August the 28th for War Room. God bless you. really great to be here and to talk to you all today. You know, Concern Women for America is the nation's largest public policy women's organization. We have about a half a million members around the country, 400 chapters. We have currently about 21 college chapters. We call them our Young Women for America leaders. And that number is growing every year. You know, I think that we are perhaps coming up on the most important election of my lifetime, and I know you've heard that before, but I think that's never been more true than today. And it is absolutely essential that women of faith speak, and the way we speak is through our vote. You know, about 60 million evangelical and faithful Catholic women in this country could, could change the election. We can swing an election any way we want, 
but first we have to vote. So make sure that you are registered to vote. And when you go to church on Sunday, look to your right and to your left. And guess what? One or both of those people won't be registered to vote. Because about half of evangelicals aren't registered. And then at any given election day, a half of those won't show up to vote. Folks, we don't have the ability anymore to stand down and let other people speak for us. We need to be the Esters of our time. We have to speak truth to power, and we need to vote. So I want to count on you. Make sure that you speak. Be the Esters of this day.